The history of the Duesenberg starts long before this J model was ever even thought of. By 1921, the Duesenberg brothers, Fred and Augie, are avid racers. 21, they win the French Grand Prix. 24, 25, and 27, they win the Indy 500. Well, E.L. Cord, he saw the potential in these two brothers and wanted to harness their engineering expertise. And this was the beginning of the Duesenberg. Well, production had started and had more than started. There were 500 chassis sitting there and the chassis in their own right were a work of art. But the bodies that went over top are as individual as the pocketbooks of the customers that bought these. They went to bodybuilders, Murphy, Ralston, and Legrand and LeBaron like this to name just a few. One of these cars is just a spectacular car to look at but it's even more spectacular to drive so let's do that. Well the first thing you notice when you get in this car for such a big car there isn't a whole bunch of elbow room in this but what is spectacular is looking out over the hood. From the back of the cowl or the back of the dash here to the front of the hood has to be close to six feet long. Very, very impressive. Opulence is all around you in the interior. Beautiful leather interior. Look at the dash. You have a brake system. And this is, keep in mind, a vacuum hydraulic brake system on all four corners, which was pretty rare back then. But it also has an adjustment here for dry rain, snow, or ice, actually limiting the amount of brakes input that was possible, sort of an early computer talk about early computers, on the dash there's a light that tells you when the water needs topped up in the battery and when it's time to change the oil. The suspension on this car, leaf spring in the front with an I-beam, but it had two sorts of shocks. It had a regular lever action shock as well as a friction damper making the ride up front actually quite nice. The rear is a solid axle with a leaf spring suspension. Again, a nice smooth car, all automatically lubricated at 500 miles. The light goes on and tells you it's lubricating the suspension. Power on these things, very impressive if you keep in mind what era we're talking about. 420 cubic inches, they made 265 horsepower in stock trim without the supercharger. Add the supercharger, which was available virtually on every car, and they were making well over 300 horsepower. Pretty much double any other production car from its era. So power is nice. The car, not only a beautiful car to look at, also a spectacular car to drive. You gotta appreciate the engineering on one of these cars. The restoration on this car, although it's 10 years old, it is still flawless. The body and paint is spectacular. Keep in mind, it's an all aluminum body except for the fenders. They are die straight. The workmanship on the paint, hundreds of hours spent sanding and polishing this car. The interior, a beautiful work of art. A little bit of wear showing finally on the carpets after 10 years. The undercarriage is still like brand new. Every piece has been painted, plated, polished, gone through to the nines. All the suspension the same. Every piece of chrome on this car has been looked after, has been polished, and has been plated to an inch of perfection. The top on it, still nice and taut. It, it works real nice, it drives real nice, it's a piece of art. The other nice thing about this car is the history is documentable right back to day one. This is truly one of the world's most spectacular classics, and because of that, it has a value somewhere between 1.2 and 1.4 million dollars.